You know what the worst feeling in the world is? Waking up and realizing you forgot to charge your phone. It just stinks because we're all so used to feeling interconnected with the world around us 24 seven that when we're not, it feels like we've lost a part of ourselves. Now, maybe a bit of a first world problem and something that only those of us who have grown up in the 21st century have had to deal with, um, but it is something that's quite irritating. And so there are ways of getting around it other than just being very diligent about how often you charge your phone. We'll talk about that once we've gotten a little bit more familiar with how current and charge work. So how does a phone actually get charged? Well, to way oversimplify it, electrons basically flow out of a charging device into your phone and then your phone gains charge. So what does that look like? Well, if I ask you a question like this, where I show you two different wires with two different amounts of current, and I say, which wire has the greatest electric current? After looking at both of them for a few seconds, A and B, you should be able to figure out that B has more current flow than A. Now that's purely from a visual standpoint, you could guess that, but there's other ways of justifying it too with equations. One equation we've already learned by this point that you should be able to use to justify the fact that there is more current in B is called Ohm's law. Ohm's law is usually displayed this way, I equals V over R. And I equals V over R tells us that when there is a voltage that is pushing electrons through a wire, there will be some internal resistance that tries to block the electrons and keep them from flowing. And when that voltage and resistance fight each other and are in conflict, the end result is how much current flow we get. So that current flow seems to be greater in B than in A. So we can assume, well, perhaps there's double the voltage in B. Maybe there's two batteries hooked up instead of one, so there's more of a push to get more electrons through. Doubling the voltage would double the current. So that's kind of like the old way of thinking about how those two wires are different from each other. It doesn't really seem likely that the resistance would be any different because those wires look very similar to each other, but the voltage could be different, which would change the current flow. So this mathematical example just says doubling the voltage would double the current, but tripling it would triple the current as well. So there's our old relationship. The new way of thinking about electrical current, the one that'll be useful for us when we're thinking about how to charge our phone, is to ask ourselves how much charge is flowing past a certain point every unit of time. So here's what I mean by that. We can define what current is better than we ever have thus far by saying that current literally is the amount of coulombs of charge that flow past a certain point each second. So now there's time in this. So if we add a time measurement into that animation, what you could do if you wanted to is you could count all the units of charge that flow out of the picture or into the picture. Uh, and after you've counted a certain amount over a certain period of time, you could come up with some kind of calculation for how much charge went through every certain period of time. So that would look like this for us. We could turn this into an equation and say that current I is equal to Q, which is the charge, divided by T, which is the time. And the units of these properties would be amps for current, coulombs for charge, and seconds for time. So this is usually the way you'll see this equation arranged because scientists like to have equations where everything is all in one line. It just looks more presentable and is usually easier to type. And so rearranging the equation I equals Q over T would give you Q equals I times T. It's just a simple algebraic rearrangement. It is in fact the same equation as the one you see above. But that one in yellow is the one that you'll typically see most often. So Q equals I times T is going to be the key to solving our iPhone question or our cell phone charging question. How do we keep our phones charged more efficiently or more often or more frequently? Um, so before we get to that piece of advice, here's a sample calculation just to show you basically how to use this formula that we just learned. And it says a light bulb has 40 coulombs of charge flow through it over a time span of two minutes. How much electric current is flowing through the bulb? So let's identify the knowns and the unknowns in this question. The knowns are the charge because they tell us that there's 40 coulombs of charge. We also know that the time is a known quantity because they say this happens over a time span of two minutes. So we know charge, we know time. And the unknown that they ask us about is how much electric current is flowing through the bulb. So current is I, that's the thing we're going to be solving for. Time is T and we're given that. And coulombs of charge is Q. So we know two things and we're looking for a third. So that's typically where we say, okay, what equation do we need? And that's going to be the one that we just talked about today, Q equals I times T. Now it's not really set up correctly to solve for I at this moment. It's set up for Q. So we have to rearrange this equation by dividing both sides by T and then canceling out the T's on the right would give us this version of the equation. Q over T equals I. And this happens coincidentally to be the first version of it that I showed you. Um, but again, the top version is what you'll see most frequently. So we turn it into this version and now we can plug in our variables because now we're actually set up to solve for the thing we're being asked for. 
So what is Q? Q, as a reminder, is 40 coulombs because that was what was given to us in the problem. And the amount of time listed for 40 coulombs to pass through that light bulb was two minutes. But two minutes isn't set up to be the base unit of time. It's like a different unit of time than what we consider to be the base unit of seconds. It's in minutes right now. So let's change the minutes into seconds by converting minutes to seconds by multiplying by 60 because there are 60 seconds in every minute. So multiplying the number two by the number 60 for the 60 seconds per minute gives us a new version of time where it's listed as the same amount of time but listed in seconds instead of minutes. So now that two minutes we have converted into seconds. And now the calculation goes like this. 40 coulombs divided by 120 seconds will equal the amount of current flow that we have in that light bulb. So what is 40 divided by 120? Well, either in your head or in your calculator, you type in those numbers and you get 0.3 amps. So that would be your final answer. And you can't forget the unit. Amps is, of course, the unit of current flow. If we had been instead solving this equation for T or for Q, you would have needed the unit S for seconds or perhaps the unit uh, C coulombs for the charge. So how do we know how to properly rearrange this formula? Well, hopefully you develop enough algebra skills that you can do it on your own without something like this. But if you're new to this, perhaps you can just kind of get used to using the formula triangle for Q equals I times T. It's set up like this. And you'll notice if I had taken my thumb or another finger and blocked out the thing I was solving for, which was I in that formula, what you would get is Q over T. And that looks like the version of the equation that I gave you over yonder. So use that formula if you want as kind of like training wheels. But eventually you will want to have enough algebra skills that you can actually solve for that on your own without a formula triangle. So now that we understand the connection between charge Q, current I, and time t, we perhaps can understand charging our phone a little bit easier. And so what I want to recommend is that if you often find yourself with a dying phone or iPad or something that just like never really seems to get you through the day, you might want to go on Amazon or go to Best Buy or something and pick up one of these things. These are called external batteries or external chargers. And they're about the size of a wallet or a smartphone. And all they do is literally store charge. They store built up electrons, which through a wire can go into your device, whatever it is, and simply charge it, almost like you're plugging it into a wall or a computer. And these will last you a couple hours. Uh, and in fact, what they rate themselves in and the unit that they use to describe how much charge can be held, you can see in this top model up above me, the, it's pretty cool actually, the solar powered one. Uh, it lists a unit of 20,000 milliamp hours. So what is a milliamp hour? Is that like a unit of time? Well, it's actually a measurement of charge, believe it or not. And it's because milliamps is a unit of uh, current, so that's I, and hours is a, unit, is a unit of time, so that's T. So that's I times T, so what does that equal? That equals Q. So milliamp hours is actually a unit of charge, believe it or not. So anyways, I recommend getting one of these devices. You just want to make sure that it has enough milliamp hours to be able to supply you with lots of milliamps of current for as many hours as possible. So the higher the number, the better it is and the more you're going to pay as a result. So do your shopping wisely and see if it helps you. And hopefully Q equals IT will help you in your physics class as well. See you in the next video.